Thanks. All right. See you back there. Thank you very much. This is uh, really an awesome event tonight, truly. Uh, another moment to enjoy, and should we enjoy most moments if possible. Uh, my name, as you know, well, maybe you don't know, formally, Mark Lewisberger. Um, many people know me as Marco, especially in the great port. And just a quick history lesson on that, as a little tiny boy, I had a, my grandmother from Italy, and I was in there during a conversation, she gave me the nickname, but she probably looked at me and said, that's my little Marco, who knows, and it stuck some 15 years later, or 50 years later. So, uh, so here I am. Um, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about where I came from, spend a few minutes on that, a little bit about the book, obviously, a little description of the book. And then how the book was birthed, as it were, or how it came about, a little bit more about the book, and then how it seemed to have changed my life, sort of before, during, and after. And then uh, finish with just one quote from my uh, actual screenwriter, who different pr project, but we love the particular paragraphs, so we'll conclude with that. I grew up in Maynard and Sudbury, Massachusetts, west of Boston. Everybody here knows is familiar with that area, but uh, I grew up in a nice little uh, uh, sort of a middle class town, certainly a low class town for Sudbury, but has a really strong connection to Maynard because uh, my mother, right here, Rita, uh, taught Maynard for 34 years, and I spent many, many of my after school hours and mischief hours and other hours in Maynard, Mass, and mm -hmm. love it very much. And many of my, my uh, years, my 20s I spent living in Maynard as well. So that's quickly about where I came from. Now the book. Uh, this was tricky because a lot of people would ask me, what's the book about? And I'd sit there and I'd go, well, a little bit about travel. It's a kind of like self-help, but I don't take myself too seriously. Uh, a little light philosophy, kind of a memoir. I'm all over the map, as I often am. That wasn't a good answer. So I had to really think this through, and I came up with three distinct descriptions for this book that, that made, seemed to make sense to me. Hopefully, it will make sense to you. So here we go. Number one, I consider this book to be literal, just passing through as it sounds. Literal traveling, geographical, just passing through towns and cities like you guys did tonight to this store. So. It's part literal, geographical, just like it sounds, just passing through. Now, the next aspect is a little more fun to me. I like this. It's figurative. Figurative. It's figuratively speaking, just passing through. Now, this one here means that uh, really moments, moments in life, it's sitting there or driving or whatever you have to be doing, and moments just come and go. Or in the book, I talk about mainly singular, that's another subject, but we'll keep it plural for the sake of discussion. We'll see moments, moments in life. And as I was thinking about moments, a particular song, and I am a music maniac, fanatic, I guess, and a particular song came to me and I couldn't resist this. And I got to highlight this song, and maybe it's you know, synony synonymous with the, the subject, on, um, figuratively speaking, on my book. That is Dust in the Wind by the band Kansas. Now, I've got a lot of people here familiar with it. If you're not, that's okay. Or if you are, that's okay, because I'm going to remind you anyway. The key point to that song to me, as it relates, it's applicable to my book, is when they say, I close my eyes only for a moment, and the moment's gone. All my dreams, pass before my eyes in curiosity. Love that. Love that quote. I, I couldn't help but share it. I think it uh, describes it better than I could. So that's number two. Now number three is a little tricky. Um, <clears throat> you think of a metaphor, uh, you think of a verb of a metaphor or a metaphor in action, I will say, and I'll say it slowly, 
metaphorically speaking, would be the third aspect of just passing through. Now, what am I talking about? Well, metaphorically speaking, it's simply this. It's the ability we have to choose our thoughts, especially ones that might be traumatic, negative, harmful in any way, we can choose to let them pass through or let them go. Uh, the average human being has thousands of thoughts every single day. And oftentimes it's very habitual and creates patterns within the brain and so forth and so on. Uh, the good news is when we learn to let this let these thoughts go, metaphorically speaking, we can benefit our lives immediately. But here's the really cool part about these three aspects and descriptions of uh, what I hope about in my book. Is the key part is that they have to really be in synchronicity. They have to sync. Think like three things kind of together or in harmony, as it were. Because I was thinking about that, again, traveling, geographical, just passing through, uh, moments, moments in life, reflecting upon things, just passing through as we sit there and reflect, and then the final one, uh, metaphorically speaking, as well. <coughs> Why they should be in harmony, I think, is because I thought of Years ago, I used to go to Nantucket Island quite a bit. Anybody you guys go to Nantucket Island much? You travel, right? I remember a lot of people, uh, a lot of people, well, I'm not picking on New York. I'll pick on New York. Yeah. A lot of people in New York, you know, New York plates, you know, nice vehicles. And they probably spend 50 uh, weeks a year really hustling. And, and, and they get there, and they expect in two weeks for their life to change, calm down, whatever it is. It's not always the case. So I thought, you know, if you chose to go to Nantucket and spend $5,000 on a, uh, maybe a shack, maybe even a shed, I don't know, what, what would you get for $5,000 in Nantucket? Not a lot. You get something maybe, then you go there and you're, uh, you're on vacation. You went down to Hyannis, you either flew or took the ferry over, literally just passing through. You're creating moments that hopefully make for great memories later on. These moments are just passing through. Wonderful, right? But we get to that tricky little metaphorical part, right? And you can be off by yourself and uh, enjoying yourself and smelling the uh, Atlantic Ocean, hearing the noises from the cobblestones downtown, people walking around. Then all of a sudden, something triggers your within your memory from one of your five senses. Something from 50 years ago, you know, drunk. Uncle Frank did to you or something like that, and you're thinking about something reminding you of that, the sound, the sight, the smell. Yeah. What am I thinking of? Yeah, but you don't let it go. You think about it more and more. All of a sudden, you're mad. You're depressed. You're anxious. You're angry. You want to call him up. He's been dead, but you still want to call him up, you know? <laughs> and uh, so you're sitting there, and you're like, you continue, so it goes from a quick, simple thought that could have been extinguished to really, in, in, think of a sponge. Now you're absorbing that thought and it's manifesting itself. And all of a sudden you say to yourself, I want my $5,000 back. I, I, I want to get, I'm on vacation. You know, so it's not just a geographical thing, see? And it's not just Nice moments, those are great to create moments for better memories later on. It's also the ability to stay on guard and kind of catch ourselves, especially if we suffered from a lot of trauma in the past, post-traumatic stress disorder, insomnia, fill in the blanks, all the acronyms you can think of, as many today. So we don't have that ability to quickly pay attention to our thoughts and uh, uh, and then really, again, things would not be in harmony with the other two. So it's all important to get these three together. And, and my book, I hope, reflects on that. And by the way, the, just passing through, obviously, I didn't invent the name. You've heard it a thousand times. But I couldn't help but use it. I, I, well, there's a history to that. But you think about the three words. It's just there's such a nice lightness to it, to me at least. I've had kind of a, a little bit of a crazy life. And just 
passing through. It's almost a relief. It's like, wow, that sounds great, you know? So let's move on to that. Where did that come from, just passing through? Um, this is kind of kind of interesting, at least to me. Uh, about 1990, I remember that because you guys remember Steve Ray Vaughan? Remember when he died? He says, you know, those moments in your, in your mind that kind of stick with you. Anybody seen live, by the way? Steve Ray Vaughan, the concert? Awesome. Great what, Woods. Great Woods. What year? Uh, 1986. Hey, Sorry. I, I mark. Uh, the year the year he died, I was painting uh, Great Woods. Really? I saw him backstage, yes. Free? Well, I was, I was, I was working there. You get paid to watch Steve Ray Vaughan. How much better is it than the No, that watch? was before the concert. I didn't get to oh, see okay. him watch the concert. Excellent, Robbie. That's but, great. Yes. I, I, I haven't seen him in 1980. He opened up, believe it or not, for the movie Blues. And it's like, I didn't know who he was. No, I don't think anyone knew who he was because it was before he got big, right? So, you know, I remember walking like almost in front of him and I'm like, he's playing Little Child for Jimi Hendrix? That's kind of sacrilegious. He's white. I mean, come on. It's, it's Jimi Hendrix. That's my fault. He turned out to be one of the best guitarists that ever lived. I digress. It was 1990 <clears throat> when it stood out and I was transitioning yet again back to Maine and Massachusetts. Here's the, what I think, the title gave, was given birth as a word. I came across uh, an older friend who I considered <coughs> very wise and uh, full discernment. And he um, approached me and said, hello, welcome me back. I'll get some small talk, great, you know. And then I remember the next thing he said, you know, when somebody kind of looks at you and they almost feel like they're looking through you, you know, they kind of get that look like, I squint a little bit. They're not saying anything, but you know, they're thinking all kinds of stuff. So he looks at me like that just for a moment and says to me, now, uh, are you sticking around or are you throwing a bunch? She has passing through. Now, I'll never forget it because it kind of put me in the spot a little bit, but I understood because he knew me. So somehow in my subconscious, that sort of gently pricked me, I believe look at my life, to examine my life a little bit. And I believe that was the beginning of this book. Now, related to that, in the book, if you go to chapter 2, and I believe it's page 29, uh, by the way, before I get to that, I'll say, by my, my age 19 to 30, and I lost count, I moved about 40 times. So you can see where I was just passing through quite a bit, and you can see, understand why people by looking at me with a reputation, like uh, my older, wiser, discerning friend did. So, in chapter 2, and I did bring notes, so I can just take a quick look. I think it's page 29. Uh, <clears> There's <throat> a quote from my book related to this. Uh, sorry, page 19. Get the 9 right. And uh, page 19 of my book, it's quote unquote, it's while. I was in what I called, while well, I was in the perfect circle of running, it all seemed normal to me. <coughs> and, it, and it really did then. Uh, today, I look back with an, a bit of more of an understanding. I uh, realize that why I lived the way I lived. So, regarding to running, and trauma, and things like that, it does make sense to me, or at least I understand it. I certainly try not to repeat it as well. Okay. Let's see what else I got going on here. <clears throat> okay. We're going to talk for a second about anybody here thoughts of things. It's, uh, many books have written about it and so forth. Thoughts of things. Well, I thought about that and I said, well, how, thoughts are mental, right? Things are physical. How can thoughts be things? How can they sort of mesh or gel together. And uh, I do talk about this on page 49 of the book. Uh, what it is is basically the various synopsises within our brains. Our thoughts can actually create physical new pathways within the brain, mental, physical. If we're accustomed to negative thinking for many, many, many years, 
And then all of a sudden we say, okay, enough. Uh, I'm going to create, by the way, positive thinking is more powerful than negative, so we have that on our site. But if I say, I'm going to create new pathways, but we don't, maybe we don't even know this, but we, that's exactly what happens. We choose new pathways and we're choosing new thoughts. And these thoughts are not repetitive and negative, as we have been reciting for many, many years and decades, but they're positive. And again, ties in with the outset of the talk on uh, metaphorically speaking, tying things in to catch ourselves and kind of retrain ourselves, really, from bad habits. <coughs> I have myself, yes, suffered from any trauma, but I have not allowed the trauma in my life to define me. And that's that's a big step for people, you know. It's, uh, you hear the word victim a lot, victimized, I'm a victim. I understand that. We're probably all victims in one way or another. But to be defined by something, something we don't want, right? Doesn't serve us in some capacity? No, thank you. So I have chosen to make my mind that trauma will not define me at least any longer. And now, how have I done this again? Will I be repetitive or redundant? I've done this by choosing. New thoughts, positive thoughts. And I can personally say it has worked. And one more thought about that. Uh, it's, it's common as humans, I find, to say it doesn't work, or come on, what are you talking about, etc., etc., etc. Well, would you rather be 60% cured or whole if you can't be 100%? Or would you rather stay where you are? Or maybe 70 or 80 or 90%. Whatever the case. It's like saying, hey, I can throw a football like Tom Brady. Well, that'd be nice, but you probably can't. But you can try. You maybe can throw it 30 yards, not 60. Whatever the case, it doesn't matter. It's all relative to feeling better. And that's what this book is really about. So finally, how has this experience, that is, this project, changed my life? How do, what do I think it's done for me? on a personal basis. And I can honestly say that, for one, I try to think, or I do think in more empathetic terms towards others and towards myself. So really, I try to have more empathy. I might have been more judgmental before. I been, might have been uh, less, uh, less insightful and uh, quick to, uh, to speak or think in a less empathetic way. I try not to do that any, anymore. So that's one thing. Another thing, I remind myself, don't take yourself so seriously. You know, really, that's that's like, man, you know, we, sometimes it's just like we walk around and we're very serious, we're tight. And so that is paid off in a, in a big way. Or other people, or anything. Your dog, don't take anything too seriously. You know, it's like, it's such an incredible habit. Third, I pause to, I notice that I pause to observe nature more, you know, you sit around and they say smell the roses or, you know, look at whatever. I do, I, I, like, it. I like it, sit down, I relax, I, whatever it is, it's just kind of stuck. If I don't do that, I just take a deep breath. It's not too hard to do, we all got to breathe, right? <laughs> so, finally, well not finally, there's three more. Another thing I learned, this was a little tricky, I learned to be grateful even for things that I was previously ungrateful for, or even felt resentful about. That's a hard one, man, I'll tell you. You know, you can go through life being resentful, regretful, angry, vengeful, fell in the blanks, or you can say, you know what, okay, I made these decisions, I did this, I did that, or this person did this, I did whatever. I'm grateful for it because I learned something for it. And somehow, I'm better for it. And if I'm better for it, that means I can help other people. So I, again, I've learned to be grateful for the pre things I was previously ungrateful and even resentful for. Here's a good one. Remember this one, if anything else. I love this. This project, I learned that people are more than willing to help, to help you on your journey. It's amazing. You, you don't think about that. Like, 
Let me figure this out. And, uh, let me go on the internet and let me get this. Ask somebody. I concluded that's all you have to do is ask. That's it. You know, to, I'm lousy computers, uh, you know, trying to write a book, I'm writing a book. It's, I got more help from people. I'm so grateful for it. It's humble. I wish they were all here tonight. It's, it's amazing. So don't be afraid to ask. Finally, in the last one, I learned to, this is tough too. I learned to forgive others. That's tough. Tougher than that, I learned to forgive myself. That was brutal, but necessary. And finally, you can hear the expressions, to let go and let God. I thought about that a lot, and I said, you know what? Maybe I gotta do that too. I have to understand that a little bit. I don't think I got it. It's just, just a phrase, you know, let go, let go, let go, you know, repetitive phrase. No, it, it's something to that. Then consider that and reflect and meditate on that. That takes care of what I took out of my project, but if I could, like I mentioned in the outset, uh, Matt Spencer is in here. He's working on a, uh, he's my screenwriter for a movie project, and he pointed this out. And I, I mean, I wrote it, but I never really thought about it. So I'm just going to leave you this one thought from page 59. And I quote, remember this, while you and I are alone, we are passing through life together same time with what we have at a particular moment. Thank you very much for coming, and that concludes my speech. Please feel free. I'll do the best I can with any questions you have. If I can't answer it, I can't answer it. But uh, go for it. Joe, where can we get a copy of the book? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ten yards. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's plenty of them. They're here at the register. Yeah, I got them. He's got to sign them afterwards. We'll sit out there like an author. And where can we get it signed? <laughs> right out here. Joe. Yeah, yeah, Another Joe, right? Yeah. Joe? Dean? Uh, David. 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 Yeah. David. See, I'm in perfect place. <laughs> That's <Wow>. okay. <clears throat> Marky, um, yes. you, you must have a number of sections of the book that, that people ask you about or talk about or their favorite sections. Is there maybe a paragraph that you could pick out and read for us that, that you're especially fond of? Sure, I'd love to. That's a great, that's a great question. Let me, hang on. Let me bring me off your Thanks, David. Awesome. Yeah. Got it. Well, other than obviously Matt Spencer, uh, Thank you, Sue. Is that one of the new ones? Uh, it's 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 not quite, but it's close. It's just, okay. Yeah. I think, <coughs> um, yeah, it's a great question. I, I have yeah, um, some revisions. I'm really oh, sorry. Um, me and my wife Monica were late, but um, when can we be expecting the movie to come out? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's enough. This is a great question. I'd like to <laughs> read the book first. <laughs> My project manager, Chris Driscoll, right there. Good man. Thanks for showing Chris. up, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> you can definitely talk to him. All right. And, uh, yep, that's uh, as a shame. I'll be willing to help. In <laughs> One thing at a time. Are you starring in the movie? Uh, well, he looks like hopefully a not. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some uh, robot, maybe. <laughs> I think Seth looks like Tom Cruise. He, he, I got a question. Sure. Like, while you're thinking about the passage, it's a pretty interesting cover there. Oh, yeah. And that's you. And could you that's briefly, in 30 seconds or less, explain this picture here? Uh, I could, but let me get to the most important part of his question. It's actually in the book. Cover design, do I have to uh, read it? By Seth Profeta. This right here, Seth. Him and I out in Yosemite National Park, California. And he also took, by the way, that's Sarasota, Florida. That's not blown up. Uh, we're just kind of, you know. He took both these pictures. And this wasn't planned, right? No. What did I, uh, what did I say? Take a picture of me? Yeah. Some, what, uh, you know. I said, post for the picture. And all of a sudden, you turned around and did that. I'm like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> so it ended up being a great picture. Yeah, he did. And so he's excellent at photography. He does quite a bit of it. And uh, I thank him very much. I thank all my 
so many people helped me, it, it would have been impossible. So, yeah, so I took the picture. And Rob, back to your question. Um, <clears throat> let's see. You know what? It's interesting because people have, I'll be honest with you, I try to be honest, it's not like they broke down a particular sentence. They sort of made a general statement like, you know, I found it inspirational, I really enjoyed it, I really liked it. But there might be something in chapter 3 towards the conclusion on time because, I'll be honest, a, uh, a really smart man down in Sarasota, Florida, had trouble with this chapter. And I had to read this through it again and again and again. And towards the conclusion, I will say that perhaps I have heard from people that have mentioned this chapter and mentioned the last paragraph. It talks about AA, alcohol, synonymous, and some great slogans based primarily on the Bible. The popular saying is one day at a time, of course. This is actually a quote from the greatest teacher who ever lived, Jesus Christ. What an excellent reminder as we are passing through our daily lives to live in bold writing this day, this moment, being in tune with our activity or non-activity, and not constantly occupied by the entrapment commonly known as time. Instead, enjoy the moment. After all, it could be your last. That might be one example, Rob. I don't know. The, uh, that comes to mind. I like that part of the book where you're helping the, the, the gentleman move through this. Oh, program. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can read the you know what that is? I'd be happy to read. You guys aren't late for any doctor's appointments. <laughs> it's a good thing it's a Saturday night. No, that's... There was, uh, when I was going to college, um, <clears throat> Bedford, Massachusetts, shared a building with, uh, with veterans. Uh, and a lot of them were World War II veterans. Uh, I really don't need the book for this. And, uh, basically, uh, I remember I was driving from school, and I had long hair, and I had a VW bus, and probably some funny smell of odor, odor going on the VW bus, but we'll leave that one alone. And this guy is on the road, and uh, shade, totally, he must have been, my mother, I'll, I'll go way past the red. So he must have been 102. So, <laughs> so he's out there, skinny, you know, he's holding his thumb out, shaking a little bit, you know. Picked him up. I know, I gotta help this guy. Long story short, he looked at the, you know, I took a talk and he's at the back of my bus, you know, and all he had back there was like big speakers or something, like no seats, spray painted all the windows black. They looked like they were professionally tended from the outside. I just fooled everybody. And he looks and says, uh, I got a piece of furniture I gotta move. Would you would you mind helping me? Yeah, of course I'll help you. How about if we meet tomorrow? Here was it three o'clock, you know? Three o'clock tomorrow? I'll give you a hand, you know? Really? Yeah. yeah. Of course we will. Yeah, I'll meet you tomorrow at three o'clock. I did. There he was. He couldn't believe it. I was fainted. Picked him up, went at the furniture. <laughs> He wanted to try to help me. He goes, no, no, I got it, you know. He wrestled the thing into the back of the bus, um, talked to him a little more, went to his destination, took it out, lugged it up some flights of stairs or whatever I did. I don't remember exactly, but for the most part, you know, the context of this is that that's what happened. And he, as I said in the book, he was speechless afterwards, you know. He was, uh, he was almost like he had a little tear come down his, his face. Like, he couldn't believe this kid did this or something. And uh, he, uh, he shook his hand firmly, and I drove. And before I drove, I looked in the rearview mirror, and I saw him, but he just kind of was like studying me, just kind of looking for a minute, as if frozen in time, as it were. And I drove away, never saw him again. The point, it was a great question. Thank you, Bob. The point, of that, had it tied in with money, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but it tied in with money and how we value things, money, or maybe experiences, or moments. That was a moment in time, so to speak. So anyway, I'll leave that down without uh, getting carried away. Anyone else? Yes, uh, right. Um, speaking of value, money, um, materialistic things are not important in our life. Do you agree? Yes. Do you remember Pearsall? 
Absolutely. Do you remember the house Gunnar's has been working on for all these years? I helped work on it. You did? Yes. Memorial <laughs> Day weekend, it burned to the ground. Monica told me. Sorry, everybody, this is a little inside. I'm sorry. But, but, no, 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 no. But just to let you sure. know, like, we made it out within minute, two minutes. Two minutes. That's your life. It, with our lights. Us four up here, right here. My, me and my wife and Rich and Teresa. Hey, Rich and Teresa. Hey, hey, Monica. Mark. Yeah, we just barely made it out. Thanks for Richard waking up at 1.30 in the morning. Holy mackerel. It's like a watchdog. But, <laughs> <laughs> it was. Exactly. That's awesome. But to, so much so I thankful. Mean, we are so grateful for our lives and materialistic things. And to his not in the book. Uh, yes, exactly. Every life, every minute. Count. Don't get me wrong. Listen, right. I had money. I have Perfect. a big house, so I get a tons of people over. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would share. Yeah. So I, I, I shouldn't too. be. I don't want to be dogmatic or black and white. There are good things about material things. Yeah. But you're right. You're, what's your point, is, Rob? The is point that, is make every minute, minute count in your, your life. It there doesn't you know. matter. Right to your point. Right. Here you go. Yes. Thank Excellent. You. Thanks for sharing. I want you to sign a book for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. And put me in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you got that I need a bodyguard. We'll talk after. He's right. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thank you for, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, anybody else? I have a question. Yes. Let's talk about let it go. Yes. And all and yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, well, 20, 30 years of counseling help. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, letting go. Wow, that's a big one. Um, <clears throat> letting go. Your, your thoughts, right? Your metaphorically speaking, is that what you're saying? Okay. It's habits. It comes down to me, it comes down to habits. Uh, you know, it could be, for example, it could be, uh, you know, you see somebody showing up that you should be really grateful for, and instantly you think, oh, man, they're going to bother me. What's <laughs> going you know? What's going on? You, know, you, know, you got this conversation going on in your head, and you get yourself worked up. Why? The person's probably here. Maybe needs help. Maybe he's here to help you. Let go of the negative thoughts. You know, live in the moment. We can't predict, you know, why that person shows up or, or whatever potential negative thought is might bother us, you know, as if we, we know. So live in the moment, negative thoughts come. There's another thought about that. Uh, I'm sorry, your first name, please? Tom. Tom, thanks, Tom. Uh, Tom, you know, um, I talk a lot about you know, on time and, and enjoying the moment and how it's always the present moment. And, you know, people get tripped up by that all the time. And tell me, talking about time. It is, I know, I know there's a mechanical device, think time, I understand that, but there's something a lot deeper than that, you know? So here it is, regarding uh, uh, letting go, negative thoughts. If we're consumed with anything, good or bad, what are we doing? We're using the present time, present moment, which is always the present moment. I don't know what it's not the present moment. I haven't had anybody explain that to me yet. I've challenged them. Ask them. They'd say, I mean, time doesn't exist. They say, well, just please tell me what it's not the present moment. We will continue. So if we're not letting go of negative thoughts, we're using our precious present moments to be consumed with negative thoughts. Oh, Tom, it's done nothing but harm for me. And uh, I still have to catch myself constantly. I do suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. There's a lot of history to me. I'm sorry I can't share all of it. I'll just, you know, say a few things and say that this is what's helped me. So that's one of the things that's helped me to just sort of be cognizant of the way we think and change it, you know, uh, with positive, more powerful thoughts. So, yeah, thanks. Sure. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, John. Hey, nice to meet you, man. I met John the other night at Starbucks. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I have your name written down on my arm. Free coffee here. Yes, John. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jennifer. Uh, I'm a 
<laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> I feel like I should put it down. No, um, my question for you is, in, throughout a life, maybe there are several, but did you have any moments that were turning point, uh, turning points, or uh, moments of clarity that helped you shift your mentality? <coughs> definitely, definitely. I remember years ago. Uh, it was uh, persistent, honest, and uh, what's what's the other word for it? A sincere, I suppose, man who. Uh, introduced the Bible to me. And I didn't know what he was talking about. And I moved around and somehow he tracked me down and I said, what's this guy want? And he, uh, he didn't con me, but he said, why don't you come over, we'll talk. My mother will feed you. I used to look weights like an animal back then. So I approved. Oh, all right. <laughs> I went over and uh, had this conversation. I was going to tell him, hey, see you, I'm good, I'm all good. That man helped change my life for the better, absolutely, positively, and that was a, a very clear, defining moment. That was certainly one, and then there was, there was others that I look back now that sort of postscript defined me. That, and I, I'm serious when I tell you this. I, I've had more close calls of death in my life, and you know, and I'm like, it was a wake-up call to me. You know, like, wow, you know, I almost shouldn't be here. So, in a way, that helped maybe smart me up or change me or reset my thinking or something as well. As, as long with, in addition, you know, one final thought, so it's a great question, although I can't think of distinctive. I did grow up with a lot of uh, severe trauma, uh, I have to say it, I had an older brother who caused a lot of it, and there's other people, very, very serious things that I suffered. I mean, I can't believe I, I, I'm still struggling, but I've, I've sort of survived. So there were areas in my life I could have gone either way, good or bad, very easily. Somehow, fortunately, in those moments, I survived those moments, and somehow maybe learned from them. And maybe they were relevant to your question on critical changes to make in life. Yes. Um, the title, Just Passing Through, yes. I, I'm just wondering, is there a, a narrative physical journey that from the beginning to the end, uh, a road trip? Or? Ah, great. Oh, really good questions. Tonight. Very thought provoking. There is to me, because um, the first chapter, without getting carried away, I'll tell you, out of the womb, first thing we do is, and I, I'll let you read it to find out. So, yes, beginning, journey, birth, out of your mother. And I won't give the ending away, but it definitely ties in. So I, I, think, I think there's a thread in there. I really do. I hope. At least in a humble way, I think there is. By the way, these are all opinions, and I'm not trying to come across like uh, whoever, somebody on TV or anything else. <coughs> this is experience. Before I described the book, I had a hard time. Like I said, I said, well, it's, you know, it's a memoir, it's experience, it's memory, it's self-help. This is just what I've kind of learned passing through myself. You know?